up in the projects East New York, me and all my friends just try to outdress each other. And, you know, we never wanted to wear the same clothes each other was wearing. So I was inspired by my father, who used to get his clothes tailor-made for me to start going to the same tailor and making my own clothes. I wanted to be different than everybody. At the time, I wasn't really thinking about being a fashion designer. I was just making clothes for myself, and it just kind of transpired into it becoming a major business. We took a look that wasn't out there yet. You know, we wanted our clothes to be more baggier. It wasn't in the stores. You know, no designer wasn't making it. No designer wasn't featuring any kid from the streets in any fashion ads. So as opposed to complaining about things, we had to do something about it. We created our own look, our own fit. We created our own two-piece hookups that we were looking for in the stores that weren't there. And we, we, we made a staple in hip-hop fashion, streetwear fashion, and inspired a lot of other people to feel like, yo, Carl could do it, I could do it too. I think we stood out because we were the first um, black young men to create a full on fashion streetwear um, line. Yeah. Products. A full, a full collection, you know, from head to toe. But also, what made it stand out as well were the colors. Because during that time, there weren't a lot of brands that actually had vivid colors and those kind of things going on. And that was something that really made it stand out, you know, on its own, without even having anything else. Uh... I think what made us stand out was, well, first, we were black. And, uh, to be honest with you, and we were creating clothes for the culture. Again, clothing without prejudice. prejudice. So for everybody into music, culture, life, fun. At that time, hip hop was coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were, like I said previously, we were accepted by hip hop. I mean, we didn't go after them. They came to us, us and, you know, you know so. Snoop showed up and Tupac showed up and Dr. Dre showed up and Suge Knight showed up. And, you know, we became the West Coast uh, fashion leader for the culture and for the street. So I reverse engineered into fashion. I did not have a background in fashion. Matter of fact, I went to school for communications and business. So that aha moment for me made me think like a business person and put on my business hat. My father was in the music industry, so that helped because I grew up watching him hustle. He managed D-Train and Jazz and Jay-Z and all these interesting people. So by the time I was in college, I had been on that club circuit from Copacabana to Zanzibar to The Fever. Like I knew that club scene, the culture. The marketing part was easy for me. I had the relationships. It was the business. And then I learned that being in school and learning business and actually doing business as an entrepreneur is two different things. A combination of hip hop and fashion gave you your identity. You know, literally would tell people who you are because in the early days we would, in hip hop, we'd go out and get a sweatshirt and everything, we get everything printed on the sweatshirt that we are. Pisces, Damon, February 23rd is my birthday. Damn near if I can put my address and my phone number, I put it on there. So when I was break dancing, uh, there was no card to hang, hand out or nothing. My crew that I was with, Farmers Boulevard, where I live. Um, I think it gave me my identity and also, you know, when you saw somebody, you know, with the checkerboard laces, you knew they put time into their, uh, the preparation and people would respect that. Fashion in New York City was defined by the boroughs. You know, Brooklyn was the grungy guys. They would wear more of a army look. They were rugged. They were, they were going to rob you, right? Bronx had the b-boy style very much you know hat tipped all the way up to the top like this and the and the, and, and the shorts and the latigras and the eyes odds Harlem is always going to be Hollywood it's always going to be black Hollywood so whether it's fur coats whether it's uh you know brands from Europe or let's say Le Coq Sportif um you know Queens was more shirt kings we were more we were uh, we were kind of a, a mixture between Brooklyn and, and, and uptown 
because we would have a lot of the the fly stuff but it would be more handmade or or, or dressed up stuff it wouldn't be as fly as dapper dan from uptown but it wouldn't be as grungy as as uh the cast from brooklyn who was contribution to hip-hop style i would say that I'm, I'm way too close to it i think um if i had to try to step out of it i think that we were kind of the first hashtag of, of, of clothing, the first globally recognized hip hop brand. Not the first hip hop brand though. I got, I got inspired by um, Walk Aware, 40 Acres and a Mule, Calk and I, uh, Cross Colors, Willy Wear. But I think that we would be the first globally recognized brand for a couple of reasons. Number one, that we empowered our own community from a community of, of a culture, not a color, but people thought it was a color, and that's fine if you wanna, you wanna think it's that. We also were putting up serious numbers where other people, such as a lot of music artists, would say, this is a profitable business too, and if I can identify with it, and 80% of them would license out their name and, and not have a good outcome, but the ones who were fashionable before they decided to come out with clothing, like Jay-Z, like Puff, would understand that their passion could also be monetized in that area. So I think it was inspirational from a cultural standpoint. I think it was inspirational from an operational standpoint to be able to have global expansion. I think it was inspirational from a monetization standpoint to show that you could actually make money doing something you love. Now I'm constantly looking how music and fashion are the same size, of the, same coin, just the other side. So that's, that is the platform that I studied back then that's consistent to what's going on right now. One of the big gangsters who used to come to my store and um, he came in with a Louis Vuitton pouch full of hundred dollar bills, him with his like his crew and I had customers in there and everybody was fascinated about this Louis Vuitton pouch, right? And it occurred to me right then and there, I say, what is it about this pouch which is only five dollars worth of vinyl that makes this so significant, you know? And then I saw it because I had been studying religion and when you study religion, you have to study symbols. So I was studying symbols. Of it. So I said, wow, it's the symbols. It's the symbols. I can get the same amount of attention and the same amount of gross income if I can master those symbols. Right? So I said, I said, Dad, if that's how they feel about a pouch, imagine if I can have them walking around looking like luggage or just like that bag. I introduced yes. it to them. They, they didn't, um, people didn't even, they had no clue. All they knew that the bags, Louis Vuitton bags cost money, that's it. And then I turned them into complete garments. Then everybody wanted to be different, so I kept introducing different, different lines, you know, like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Bally became popular. None of these brands, they all thought I was a, somebody putting a garment together. You know what I mean? They thought, they had no clue because they didn't study me. They had no clue to what I was. They thought like, I'm a regular guy just making garments, you know? They didn't know that uh, culture is who I am. So what's very interesting is in the early days of hip hop, a lot of people didn't have stylists. They had their friends who dressed well, who were best dressed in high school or something, and they would advise them. But the thing about hip hop is, and this is true of people of color, style is innate in our DNA. And so they would just put things together. And then what would happen is, you'd see an LL Cool J in fitted jeans and a big bomber jacket and fat gold chains and a tank top. And then suddenly everyone's starting to dress that way. And then you start to see fashion designers take that look and do it in an elevated luxury way. Stylist came into hip hop, and I mean most notably, I would say is Misa Hilton and June Ambrose, and they really came in in the golden era of hip hop, and they were able to elevate what was happening on the streets, but kind of reimagine it. So what does that look like if you work with 5001 Flavors and do customized things that we saw on the streets, but now you're seeing it in glossy music videos and on the covers of magazines and on CD jewel cases. Um, they were taking what Dapper Dan had done with logos 
and really kind of working with DAP to kind of collaborate on different outfits and kind of a remix, right? A mashup of like high fashion, the streets, and just pure creativity. So stylists are able to come up with a vision, guide the celebrities, and kind of keep them consistent with their looks, and then be a bridge from the streets to the designer showrooms and the actual designers themselves. To hip hop style, I would say that I brought a new wave of energy and I was able to um, honor and take in what had come before me and sort of remix it and reintroduce it. And so that shows up as my styling is eclectic, it's colorful, it's um, taking around the way looks and elevating them, taking things that people from around the way aspire to look like and dream to have and mixing it with a little bit of fantasy in there sometimes. You also see a lot of the Asian influence and the West Indian influence, but I'm truly a hip hop girl to the core, that's it. I love that um, there's so, mu so much range in hip hop fashion for women. It wasn't always that way. In the beginning, the women had to, they dressed more like tomboys and they had to be tough and like go, be able to go toe to toe with the guys and, and, and be covered so that they were respected. Um, and then Kim came in and she changed that. She showed how um, celebrating her femininity and sexuality was a, also a form of power but she was able to do that because they paved the way so she was able to to step on the foundation that they created which opened the lane for the way that um the female rapper was able to evolve i always think that hip-hop in its essence is young people outside of the establishment seeing, look, uh, finding community and connection. So it's it's sort of like, I don't know if you call it the scale of obsolescence, I don't know if that's the correct fashion term, but it's gotten so high that inevitably it's gonna go back to where it started, which is in urban neighborhoods. Now whether that's an urban neighborhood in America or China or the Philippines or some country in Africa, who knows? But it will go back to where it started again because Young people need a voice. We're stronger together, and people can see that in this exhibit when they see all the diversity of fashion and all of it looking different, but how it came up together in the same time, and this huge force that just touched the world and is still standing today in a very big way.